Okay, we are recording. This is EE3921, Fall 2013, Week 1, Lecture 2, Course Introduction. There's no Lecture 1 or there was no Lecture 1 because I was out of town. Uh, who am I? My name is uh, Bharatwaj. Bart Muthuswamy and I'm an assistant professor of electrical engineering and computer sciences at the Milwaukee School of Engineering and I'll be the instructor for this course. I've already emailed you the syllabus in PDF form. Emailed you the syllabus in PDF form so I'm not going to go over the syllabus in detail because obviously you can read it and understand the main ideas in it about the uh, course logistics, if you will. Now, something important, my server is down because of a power supply failure, so it'll take me a couple of weeks to get it back up. In the meantime, I'll post the videos on my YouTube channel. I already sent you a link to that. Also, I'll email you PDF of the recorded videos. Okay? So, this lecture, we're going to basically talk about what is 3921? So the title of E3921 is Digital Systems Design. So I want to highlight the fact that this course is about systems design. You may not be interested in FPGAs, but the purpose of this course is to give you some big ideas. Uh, so the purpose... Uh, give you some big ideas behind systems design, not particularly digital, although the vehicle that we will use in this course for understanding these ideas is an FPGA. So what are some of the big ideas? Some examples are uh, modular design, that is you have to design module by module, design and debug module by module, understand limitations of hardware and in your case and uh, software that is quarters etc but more uh, particularly later in this course we will look at fpga designs that incorporate so let's say uh, this is your FPGA on the DE1 board, which is a Cyclone 2. So what we'll look at, is, so this is the FPGA on DE1, the platform that we will use, that, or that I'll use in this course. You're welcome to use any other platform, even Xilinx tools if you want. Uh, but however, again, I'll use the Terrasic DE1 with software from with the FPGA from and software from Altera. But anyway, on the FPGA, what we will use is a NIOS 2 soft processor, okay, and that will interface to a custom, uh, so this is a custom VHDL core, if you will. So this is the big picture behind this course. And because of this picture here, note that the course is organized as a bunch of case studies. Okay? And the project is open ended. So if you go through the syllabus, there are some deadlines on when to, when you should submit the project and uh, in PDF form, etc. So please go through it and email me or ask me when you have questions. But the bottom line is, we will be using this kind, we'll be implementing this kind of design and your projects should reflect this. Now, of course, you can make your own soft processor. However, the point is, the course and the project emphasize this, emphasize this kind of design. And this is called 
an SOC system on a chip or in our case SOPC system on a programmable chip. Now let's look at some of the software that you'll use in this course. So the software that we will use is primarily Quartus. Okay. Uh, this is for synthesis onto FPGA. We will also use model sim for functional simulation. And I'll be using Quartus 13.0 in this course and the corresponding version of model sim. You can use 12.0 if you will, but the most important thing is I'll be using something called QSIS, which is actually a part of Quartus. Comes in Quartus. This is for instantiating, not in, yeah, instantiating, the NIOS subsystem. Okay, and we'll be using uh, software build tools for Eclipse, Eclipse SBT. This is to write C code for NIOS. And in this course, we'll also be using put a little go here because it's a part of Quartus, something called TimeQuest. And I think I just crashed this thing. Close this, restart it. Hopefully, if it even closes. Yeah, it did close, but I'm not sure that hopefully it saved my data. Let's see, note. It did. So, what I'll do is I'll write this here so I don't crash it. We'll also be using TimeQuest for timing analysis. But the bottom line is you need to, uh, this is a software that I'll be supporting or that I'll be discussing in lecture. And as I was saying, you can use 12.0, but basically, Anything before 12.0 will not work because I don't think QSIS, uh, the predecessor to QSIS was called SOPC Builder, and that's what is supported in Cordis versions earlier than 12.0. So anyway, I recommend you upgrade to 13.0. It's not that difficult. And when you have questions, ask me. Now, uh, before, that's about it for the introduction. So next time, we will come checking the time. We have we're gone only eight minutes. So next time we'll look at a, we'll start with a review of VHDL, uh, particularly combinational logic. But before I conclude this lecture, I want to talk a little bit about TimeQuest because all of these, uh, like that is uh, functional simulation, might be is should be familiar to you. But TimeQuest and timing analysis is more of an art than a science. So why TimeQuest? So TimeQuest is used to provide timing closure. So what does that mean? So recall from 2902 that when you have a synchronous design, you basically have flip-flops. Let's take our ubiquitous friend, the D flip-flop, positive edge trigger. And basically, you need to make sure that your design or that your signals do not violate, for example, the setup time and the hold time. So setup time is the time before so this is the clock, time before the clock edge that data 
must be stable and th is the time after clock edge that data must be stable so if you think about it when you have a complex design like this one on an FPGA you cannot possibly go into every flip-flop at the hardware level at the chip level and make sure set up and hold time among other things are satisfied so instead what you do is use a tool such as time quest and you specify so to achieve time enclosure timing constraints such as max clock frequency whoops uh, bones on setup and hold among other things so etc are specified via SDC synopsis design constraints file okay are specified via SDC files so the bottom line is this time enclosure is very very important for a practical industrial design you will not see this in academic examples unless for your senior design let's say you're using FPGAs and you fill up 80% of the FPGA so a classic example of timing failure is your design works but then you add another VHDL module to your design and the entire system fails to function so you have a timing error and the most probable reason is your timing constraints are not satisfied so basically you tell time quest that these are the bounds I want on for example my setup and hold times and then what time quest does is it guides the place and route tool to satisfy timing on the final design so remember I said uh, timing closure is more of an art than a science so let's say timing is not satisfied then you have to go back to your SDC and relax put some of the constraints or if that doesn't work you have to rethink your design so anyway, we'll go through all this in this course. So, of course, bottom line is this course is not a rehash of 2902 or 2900. Uh, there's no point in me going through the same thing again because you already paid money for 2902. So bottom line is if you're really iffy on your combinational, well, you should not be iffy on your combinational logic skills, but if iffy on your sequential logic skills, then you should really rethink taking this course. Uh, point number one so uh, basically wait for the end of the first week or the end of the second week see how you do in lab one which is basically a 24-hour clock if you find that very difficult then I highly encourage you to drop this course because it's not that yeah you won't learn anything but you'll also feel very miserable taking this course point number one point number two oops I was closing my eyes as I was talking so I didn't see that thing pop up but anyway uh, point number two is in these videos you may think I give you step-by-step -step directions to use the tool I really don't okay I only give you the big picture and I give you a couple of examples the reason why I do that is first of all I can't really teach you everything there is nobody can on these ideas we as faculty give you the big picture and give you examples to highlight some of the important points and also caution you of pitfalls it is up to you to be motivated uh, to work on this to be mindful of the different uh, for example warnings you get from the tools and also practice it is design mode okay if somebody thinks that I give step-by-step -step directions uh, in these videos 
to pass to make students pass the course well they're dead wrong right i to be honest it's retention is not what guides me okay i what guides me is education so hopefully you learn ideas from me and i also learn stuff from you so please give me feedback and uh, yeah welcome to 3921 see you next time